All right, I see we're a couple minutes after the hour, so we are going to get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, appreciate you joining us uh, for this morning's session. Um, happy Biotech Week, National Biotech Week. Um, every every Biotech Week for the last three years, we have been um, honoring Biotech Week by doing our road trip across the province and visiting communities and talking about the vibrant life sciences sectors within each of those very unique uh, jurisdictions. And today we have uh, the city of Brampton with a very vibrant life sciences sector. And we're gonna hear from several speakers um, from Brampton uh, talking about uh, the activities within their life sciences community. But before we start, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that though we are meeting virtually, uh, we are all on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous people for thousands of years. Uh, we acknowledge that the Brampton community is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe Chippewa peoples. And the land is home to the Métis and most recently the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. And we also acknowledge that Brampton resides within Treaty 19. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work, live, and play on this land. Just a reminder that if you uh, have any questions during the presentation, you can type them into the Q&A section on the bottom of the platform. And I don't know if you have, there we go, right there. Um, so within the feed loop platform, just go to the bottom there, there's a Q&A tab. You type them in there, we'll be able to see them. And towards the end of the presentations, we'll have an opportunity to answer any questions from the audience. And I would like to thank now uh, the sponsor of today's session, which is the City of Brampton. Thank you so much for uh, supporting uh, the, today's session. And I'd like to introduce Martin Bowl from the City of Brampton to provide a, a few words. And I know we have a short video to play as well. So Martin, over to you. Thanks, Jason. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm Martin Bull. I work for economic development in the city of Brampton. Very pleased to be able to host this tour. Uh, very briefly, today you're going to hear from two accelerator centers, uh, Tor Toronto Metropolitan University, TMU, and Altitude, a post-secondary institution, Sheridan, healthcare institution, Osler Health, and our private sector partner, Boston Scientific. We are very pleased and thankful that they are sharing their insights today. In the future, please stay tuned about our new medical school through TMU, our Beehive, our international accelerator, and our cybersecurity work that we're doing with a variety of colleges and universities. Here now, tune in and please listen to a short video on our innovation district. So please roll tape. Thank you. We are building a world-class innovation district in the heart of our downtown, which will support entrepreneurs and startups at every stage of their journey. We are becoming a hub for incubators, tech companies, accelerator spaces, and cybersecurity. It will be an ecosystem where entrepreneurs can create companies and products, hire talent, raise capital, and scale their company, all without leaving our innovation district. It's a pretty exciting time in downtown Brampton. Brampton, as we know, is uh, perfectly situated between the Toronto Waterloo Corridor that creates access to a ton of different technology organizations and support structures, which is critical to cybersecurity resilience and building the workforce of the future. One of the important things for tech-based companies is they need a lot of resources and a variety of resources to get to scale and to bring prosperity to our area. Brampton has a number of academic institutions that really are focused on support supporting tech and supporting innovation. University of Guelph Humber has been interested in Brampton for quite some time. It's a vibrant growing community. It is a population that's growing. It's attracting businesses. It's a globally recognized city. And it has a vision for innovation. And that aligns very well with the vision that we have for the University of Guelph Humber. Brampton is shaping up to be a global competitor, doing the right things to attract entrepreneurs and to build the underpinning of what an innovation district and an innovation economy needs, starting with 
with universities and academic institutions, including co-working spaces and innovation partnerships, but also attracting talent. Our strategic plan has us bringing 200 foreign-born entrepreneurs to Brampton. Can you imagine the number of jobs that it'll create, the number of exports it'll make happen, and finally, the amount of activity within the community because each one of these is a consumer and provides fringe benefits to the economy. Brampton is home to 75,000 businesses, 700,000 people. We have a diverse workforce that represents 234 different cultures, speaking 115 different languages. We have the lowest average age of 36 years in Canada for a big city, and we have an access to a highly skilled talent pool, and our innovation district is just steps away from the Brampton GO station, interconnecting the entire GTA and the innovation corridor. When I think of innovation district, I think of potential. I really believe that the global economy is changing. I think the innovation district is an opportunity to create an environment where startups excel. When I think of the innovation district, I think about the future. Fantastic. Thanks, Martin, for sharing that uh, video with us. Uh, very exciting times in, in Brampton, indeed. Um, so we have several uh, speakers today, and uh, we'll just introduce them all right now, and, and then we will uh, kick things off. Uh, so starting us off will be um, Brandon uh, Sheffield from William Osler Health System. Following him will be Michael O'Leary from Sheridan College, Pam Banks from the Altitude Accelerator, Fardan Khan from TMU Venture Zone, and Ken Spears from Boston Scientific. So Brandon, over to you to kick us off. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so my name is uh, Brandon Sheffield, and I'm the research lead at the uh, William Osler Health System. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our uh, research program uh, with a focus on our uh, cancer care uh, program through our research department. So you can have the next uh, slide, please. This is uh, some financial disclosures and uh, the next slide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, I'd like to start here uh, just to, to remind everybody that cancer is the number one cause of death for Canadians. Uh, this disease uh, affects one in every two Canadians, and it really touches every single household in our community. So we can have the next slide. Uh, this, uh, this slide represents uh, what we view as the standard of care for cancer treatment. Uh, this is what we all expect to have if we're affected by cancer, and that is uh, precision cancer care, where we match uh, selected mutations or driver mutations together with targeted therapy. And uh, when we achieve this, we know that patients will uh, live a lot longer, but also have a much higher quality of life uh, when living with this disease. But it takes a lot to make that happen. We need to be able to find uh, that driver mutation using advanced diagnostic techniques. Uh, and we need to do that in a timely fashion. And then uh, together, we, we also need to find a targeted therapy, be able to access that drug that'll undo that uh, driver mutation that really makes the, the tumor cell into a cancer cell in the first place and restores normal balance to the cell and turns everything uh, back to a more normal pathway. Uh, so it really does take a lot. And we can have the, the next slide. Uh, so in terms of uh, accessing this type of treatment within a community setting uh, like Brampton is very, very difficult. Uh, for patients in suburban hospitals uh, outside of uh, major academic teaching centers, it takes a long time to get these uh, genetic sequencing results as the specimens need to be sent around uh, through mail to different facilities, uh, typically to uh, downtown academic teaching hospitals. Uh, next slide. Uh, we're very fortunate that uh, in partnership with our research uh, department here at William Osler, we've actually established the world's first uh, molecular oncology lab that's based in a community setting. Uh, so patients in Brampton can have their genetics done locally. Uh, next slide. And uh, this was possible through partnerships with industry like Biocardis uh, and Thermo Fisher, so that William Osler was actually the first in Canada to use uh, some of this new technology. And we were able to reduce the time it takes to get genetic results from over two months down to uh, just three days when we most recently measured. And that's actually a, a world record that's being held right now uh, in the city of Brampton. So you can go to the next slide. Uh, 
accessing the drugs is the other half of this equation. And uh, patients treated at the William Osler have actually been the first in Canada to access a number of emerging compounds. And that's all been done through our uh, clinical trials uh, research program. Uh, next slide. You can see that uh, there's a number of targeted therapies which are really emerging over the next uh, coming years. And for our partners in the pharmaceutical industry, this uh, represents a big task in terms of uh, gathering uh, the real world evidence, running these clinical trials and ushering these compounds uh, past regulatory approval and uh, into clinical practice. So William Mosler has really uh, partnered with the pharmaceutical industry uh, to help with that process, but also to make these drugs available to our patients at the same time. So next slide. Uh, you can see, uh, and the next, uh, well, sorry, the, uh, Font came out a little bit funny, but you can see that uh, William Osler has a, a number of clinical trials uh, that actually help uh, Brampton uh, cancer patients access some of the newest therapeutics. And the majority of our trials are actually uh, performed as partnership uh, with uh, partners in the uh, pharmaceutical industry. The patients within uh, William Osler Health System represent a very rich source of real world evidence. We have all walks of life uh, walking through our doors. And for um, the majority of clinical trials, clinical trials, sorry, Osler's actually one of the top uh, recruiters, both domestically. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, next slide. Uh, so with together with support uh, for programs like our palliative care uh, program, which has been recognized by the European Society of Medical Oncology, as well as our immunotherapy program, which is actually a first uh, in the world that actually helps patients not just access uh, novel therapeutics, but uh, better manage the side effects uh, from those drugs so that patients will actually stay on the therapy longer and derive maximal benefit from these treatments. You can go to the next slide. Uh, and just to show you an example, this is uh, what, what everything looks like when it works uh, close uh, all together. So this is a patient with a newly diagnosed lung cancer. They're a never smoker, never used tobacco. And you can see in that this is a CT scan with the heart in the middle and all the white stuff um, beside the heart is, uh, is cancer. That rapid genetics is working so we can uh, find that, that driver mutation is a rearrangement of the RET gene. Next slide. Um, through our partnership with uh, the pharmaceutical industry, we're able to get uh, early access to a drug at the time was known as Loxo 292, is now Health Canada approved as uh, selvercatinib. And within a few weeks of taking this drug, uh, all of this patient's disease has uh, disappeared. And next slide. Uh, the most important thing is what he uh, said is that for the first time uh, since being diagnosed with cancer, he actually felt the way he did uh, before he got sick. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, this uh, really was just a snapshot of what we're doing in the precision cancer care world. We have a number of uh, research programs uh, spanning uh, every sort of possible research uh, with a wide array of investigators who are very eager to try new things, uh, to put your devices into practice and to form uh, partnerships that can improve uh, healthcare for our patients. So thank you very much uh, for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to working with you soon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to present with you uh, this morning. Uh, today, I'm going to speak to you a little bit about the Center for Healthy Communities. My name is Michael Leary. I'm the Dean of Faculty of Applied Health and Community Studies. Uh, Sheridan is uh, very lucky to have great partners within uh, the City of Brampton. And you may have heard of the recent planning grant that the City of Brampton has approved, $2.5 million to help us support the building of a new center that will refocus how we educate uh, the next generation of allied health uh, and, uh, providers for the citizens of Brampton and Ontario, as well as nurses uh, within the city. Next slide, please. I think we're, we all know that the, the incidence of uh, overweight uh, and obese individuals within uh, Canada, but certainly within North America, uh, has skyrocketed over the last 60 years. Uh, in Peel, uh, we are not um, immune to that. 62% uh, of Peel residents are obese or overweight. 58% uh, of Brampton residents are not physically active. That's a combination that unfortunately uh, is working its way down to 
uh, children. When children are, are less active and they're gaining more body fat and more weight. 48% of Peel residents report having at least one disease of chronicity. And uh, as the previous presenter, Brandon, highlighted, um, deaths due to chronic disease have gone down substantially. Uh, and we are very effective at treating uh, certain diseases like diabetes. Uh, and if we look at the uh, population that sits within uh, Brampton, there's a, a strong South Asian population that we know that 15 to 20% of South Asians will develop type two diabetes uh, at, a, at a lower body weight than other cultures. Uh, so we know that this compounded with a shortage of nurses and a stress on the healthcare system uh, compounds this issue and, and makes it very challenging uh, for our healthcare system to keep up with the emergency room visits, to keep up with the acute care that is required to keep individuals um, healthy. Uh, we also know uh, that uh, the needs of these individuals become more complex and more diverse as we move uh, forward. Uh, next slide, please. What we are proposing is an investment in upstream preventative care, and it's a, a holistic look at what we are doing. And I know this has been proposed uh, previously, but the approach we're taking uh, really has um, a number of different phases. The first phase is culturally competent care uh, that supports the diverse population. We are, we are invested across the breadth of our programs and our faculty uh, around how we would engage with our communities in different ways to meet them where they are at. It is very important for us to make sure that when they come to Sheridan, um, that individuals will receive culturally competent care from our learners, from our staff, and that will propel them forward. We want to invest in technology and innovation. Sheridan's home to a center of mobile technology uh, and innovation. Uh, it's an incubator, much like uh, the one we heard about at the beginning. Uh, and we will combine technology and innovation on how we might uh, engage with individuals on an ongoing basis rather than when they just visit our clinic. And what is that clinic? That clinic would be a center for chronic disease management and preventative care. Uh, and that's number three there. It's been adapted, chronic pain management has been adapted to center for chronic disease management and preventative care. And what we're really looking to do is to engage with our partners, uh, look at diseases of chronicity. We can take type two diabetes, for example, bring those individuals uh, with our partners into the center and plan around a holistic care plan. And, you know, being a kinesiologist myself, um, the message of just go and exercise and eat better really hasn't worked very well uh, over the last 30 to 40 years. Looking at a holistic approach where we recognize that someone might be in a multi-generational home, navigating the healthcare system, uh, raising young children, uh, making uh, time for their own personal health, while it's, a, it's an important priority uh, for their health and well-being, uh, it might not be on the top of their list. And how do we get to them in a way where we're able to provide them supports and so that they can invest in preventative care? And finally, uh, we're looking to um, look at preventative interprofessional care to reduce hospitalizations. Really, the, the goal of investing upstream uh, in preventative care is to look at how might we reduce the number of acute visits to places like William Mosler and others. Uh, during the uh, recent pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we saw that um, at least data came out that if you were physically active, just physically active, you had 2.5 times less likely uh, to visit the, ho the, the hospital and 2.3 times less likely to have mortality from uh, COVID-19. And, and we know that these types of um, pandemics or these types of incidents may occur again. And one of the great things that we can do is make sure that our, our population is physically active on a regular basis. Next slide, please. So the center will also be a hub to train the next generation of nurses. Uh, we, we have a nursing degree uh, that's been recently uh, submitted to the, the ministry for approval uh, and allied health professionals to look after the people of Brampton and Peel. Uh, I think that this new, um, this new center complements the new medical school vision for culturally competent care uh, that TMU is bringing to the region. It also complements very well the interplay that will be required between physicians, general practice GPs, and the community supports of allied health professions in order to really maintain the health of the general population outside of the hospital care. Uh, we looked at this to be a living laboratory uh, for innovation for our partners, uh, spaces for <clears throat> uh, academics, research, 
uh, medical professionals, technology innovators, social service providers, and residents. We want to help address the hallway healthcare issue uh, by addressing chronic pain, mostly chronic disease, and through interprofessional uh, collaborative preventative care. And finally, we know that a center like this propels uh, growth within the region. Uh, we know that this will be an opportunity for people to uh, see space for their own uh, innovations uh, and invest. Next slide. So thank you all very much. Uh, we'll take questions after the presentations. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pam Banks, and I'm the executive director of Altitude Accelerator. Um, we recently joined the Brampton Innovation District to really help work with our community partners in getting companies to market. Next slide, please. We focus really on two areas. One is our incubator program, and, and this is really intended for companies from a stage perspective that have completed their R&D they more or less have the shape of a company and they're really focused on market launch and gaining traction. So we have intimate sort of cohort-based programming for a four month period that really works with the founder and the founding team to make sure that they have the support they need to grow the company. So this works really well in the innovation district. So as those technologies and those companies and those innovations start to gel together and they're ready to get to market, we really focus on that component. Uh, we bring in trainers that uh, go through and sort of work at the shoulder of the companies to make sure they know and understand how to structure their outreach to prospective buyers. Um, we've worked with companies in understanding kind of their ecosystem, their, their sales cycle. Um, selling health related products is a long cycle and knowing and understanding sort of the different uh, levels that you need to sell your product or your technology is really important. We, we also help those founders understand, you know, a first or a second sale doesn't mean your company is sustainable. You need to build a, a pipeline and you need to build a pro process so that you have sustainable sales. Um, so we bring in special specialty kind of uh, speakers and that work with the company, not only on the sales piece, but also on the social piece. You know, who is your target market? How do you make sure that you're speaking the right language to your target market? So product market fit is really important. Um, in the last year or so, we worked with a company that was launching a, a new sort of health related product to help independent um, pharmacies promote vaccines. And we worked with them to um, connect with different programs that helped as a pilot and also help them with their, their messaging and, and making sure that they were targeting kind of the right pharmacies with the right language and the, and the right structure for their sales, both their website, their written materials, their team, to make that, that product get off the ground and it's still operational today. Our second program that I wanna talk a little bit about is investor readiness. So we look at these as kind of stage programs. So the incubator program is really meant and intended to help those companies kind of with some lift and get off the ground. And the investor readiness program is for those companies that have demonstrated some traction and they really need an investor to help them get to the next level. So this also is a cohort based program. Um, our last cohort that finished in June, we had nine female founders from across Canada come together. And what we really do is we try to deconstruct the pitch. We need to, we focus with the founders on, from their business kind of foundation up to make sure that their presentation actually holds up under scrutiny from an investor. So typically the ecosystem produces founders that know how to do great pitch but often um, they're not able to understand and go back and be prepared to respond in a way that's um, meaningful to investor. So that's what really we really focus on. We also have 
um, a number of investors that are kind of in our family and friends group that we go back to and we make curated introductions from the founders to investors to help them with their first raid raise, usually a seed or an A raise. Um, the part that's great about the Brampton Innovation District is we do have this team approach so that when we're, we're looking for whether it's experts to come in and speak to our group or whether it's friendlies in the community that are willing to speak to a, a company as a potential contractual um, project, we, we do have a, a really strong and dedicated community that's interested in supporting those companies. So that's how we work within the ecosystem. Um, our, our programs are generally tethered to this community, although we work with founders from across Ontario. And again, our, our real focus is to help those companies with sustainable sales and traction, and also getting them to the point where they're ready for an investor. Um, next slide. This is me, we're here. Uh, Altitude Accelerator as part of the Brampton Innovation District. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to present today. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for, for joining today and thank you for, for having us. Um, I feel like the last two presentations have perfectly set up the stage for, for me to speak a little bit about uh, the Brampton Innovation Zone and what we are doing. Uh, so we're the Brampton Venture Zone, recently renamed um, by TMU. So we're a partnership between the City of Brampton and TMU, which is Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly known as Ryerson University. And we are very similar to, as Pam mentioned, uh, we are also an accelerator slash incubator focused towards uh, sector specific uh, companies. Uh, so happy to share a little bit about us. Uh, so we have two programs, but for, for the sake of this talk, I'll just talk about one of uh, our main programs, our flagship program, which is called Launch. Uh, as well as show you some case studies of some health companies that have um, gone through our program and are now alumni companies. Uh, so we are a six month non-equity based incubator program. Um, we're designed for MVP ready technology startups. So we only work with technology companies. Uh, these could be hardware or software across three sectors. So to date, uh, our first year, which was uh, last year, uh, we were a launch in health and wellness. Uh, this year we launched into SML, which is, um, mobility, supply chain, um, and uh, smart, sorry, smart city, mobility and logistics. And next year we'll be launching into food sustainability. And the goal is that each year we add a new sector. So we work with new sectors each year and we grow our uh, and expand our, um, our core group of advisors and EIRs and industry partners. So the way we work is, next slide please. Uh, we, we provide um, market ready startups. So who have a product, who demonstrated some semblance of, of some traction um, to go out and pair them up with industry partners that we have. So rather than look for startups, we go to industry, ask them what issues they're facing. And this is local to the Brampton and Peel region. Um, and we'll ask them what opportunities they, you know, they think they are in the market, what problems they're facing. And then we go recruit from those problem statements, we'll go recruit the companies into these sectors. Um, so that way we align industry with the type of startups that we, we, we bring in. And towards the end of the six month program, companies, you know, would have had developed a detailed product roadmap, you know, honed down uh, a customer profile or have piloted uh, or begun multiple pilots with, uh, with some of the industry partners that we've introduced, uh, or they're getting ready for their fundraise um, as well. So the way we add value, next slide please. Um, we, we do that in a bunch of different ways. We have an entrepreneurship fund that, that we provide to the companies. Uh, so that's roughly about $15,000 per company with no strings attached. So that means we don't take any equity. Uh, there's hardly any limits on what they can use that for. Uh, we look for companies that are addressing or wanting to grow within the Brampton or Peel region. 
So in that sense, we introduce them with those, again, industry partners, we're industry driven. Uh, we're trying to provide some mental resilience for entrepreneurs, uh, as well as, you know, the typical incubator programming around product, around sales, around fundraising. Um, we're trying to uplift local talent. So we're trying to match, you know, the, the startups and benefiting the field region. Um, and then trying to upskilling the innovators as well and the founders, hopefully, who come into the program. Um, you know, they increase their knowledge base. Uh, but more importantly, it's those one-on-one -on -one touch points coaching with our entrepreneur in residences and then advisors that's that's of key value to our founders. All right, next slide. And so just a little bit of our team. So Usha uh, Srinivasan is our director. Uh, she comes from a health uh, and wellness uh, health background, health sciences background, uh, similar to me, um, as well as our marketing lead uh, as well. So we have, we're have we a small team, lean and mean, uh, total of five folks. We have two people in, in operation as well. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and now I just wanted to highlight two of our companies uh, that have you know been within the health and wellness sector. So this, this may be a good tie into what I think um, I believe it was Brandon that was that was talking about uh, cancer and pathology research. Uh, so we had a company, a medical device company uh, called Sonomix, and their mission is to develop novel technologies targeting inefficiencies in the pathology workflow. They're focusing with with lymph nodes uh, and enabling clinicians to make better informed treatment decisions. Um, so they've had great traction. They've you know developed a product. They came to us with barely an idea, uh, and we helped them sort of guide their product development, um, you know, connecting with the right folks and the right people. Uh, they've partnered with a bunch of different folks. You see Willie Mosler as well um, and other regions, which is great to see. Uh, and then lastly, funding as well. Um, you know, they're they're gearing up for a uh, funding round as well. So, so some good traction for them. Uh, next slide, please. And as well as Medici, uh, which is an online platform that allows users to connect uh, with local pharmacies uh, through an interface and then enables them to order, you know, OTC products um, quite easily. And they've been in the in the market for, for a few years, and I believe they have worked with a bunch of different partners uh, within the Brampton region. Again, um, our, our whole goal is to support the journey of the of the founders and the startup. So it's wonderful to see that, that we all can come together and support them. So they've had some great development and traction as well. This may be a little bit outdated, but they definitely uh, are working well over close to 100 local pharmacies and have had multiple pilots launched in Terry as well. So I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, thank you for your time and look forward to any questions and connections. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Uh, really excited to be here. My name is Ken Spears, and I'm the uh, VP and General Manager of Boston Scientific. So um, it, it's great to have been invited. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Martin, uh, the Economic Development Group within the Brampton City, and uh, LSO for supporting this initiative. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it is a pleasure to be here, and especially with uh, other innovative leaders and organizations who are committed to contributing to this conversation of growth and innovation in the life sciences ecosystem in Ontario and in this country. So during my short time together, and I'll have to go through this on horseback because we've got roughly five minutes to share some thoughts, but I'm going to take you through uh, a little bit of um, how Boston Scientific innovates and what we've innovated. So um, I'm going to talk about a couple products and again, quite quickly, back a slide, I'm sorry. And and then we're going to share our Boston Scientific mission. So we've got a mission uh, among my team and a commitment to Canadian patients. And I'll conclude on why we chose Brampton as the home of our new head office and hybrid collaboration center. And next slide. So in conversations related to the commitment to innovation. So for those of you who don't know, Boston Scientific is a, a large uh, medical device supplier. We have a global presence and we treat 30 million patients every year uh, through a global team of 40,000 employees. And we represent about 17,000 products that are developed through a relentless pursuit um, uh, to seek those life-saving, life-changing innovative medical devices and put those innovative medical devices into the hands of our care provider heroes. Uh, 
And to this end, we launched about 90 new products across seven different disease states last year alone. And we continue this uh, tremendous pursuit of innovation as we move forward. Next slide, please. On this slide, I wanna share just a couple of medical devices, innovative medical devices that Boston Scientific has launched into the Canadian marketplace. The first on the left, uh, upper left is a device called the Watchman Flex. And the Watchman Flex is, is a product that it's a one-time um, medical device that's implanted that reduces stroke for a lifetime in patients with non valvular atrial fibrillation. So it, it's a major step forward for patients looking and seeking a stroke to reduce their stroke risk. On the bottom left, uh, we have a product that's, that, that is um, marketed as Therosphere's Y90. And the Y90 product is designed to reduce and even eliminate um, cancer and it's used for cancer of liver treatment. Um, and I've got a story that came to me uh, through a physician. And this story is of a 34 year old woman who presented um, with liver cancer. And at the time she was also pregnant. And uh, these complications of course are very dire. And the fact that the liver cancer presented as a tumor on her liver, the size of a Christmas orange, um, again, was a very serious situation. Uh, this patient was treated with Y90. And it's one of those great news stories where um, the, the patient today, and, and everyone will be happy to hear that the patient, this young woman is doing well and living a healthy life, as is her, her young child who is almost five years old at this point. So um, these are the types of uh, patients and patient stories that really drive Boston Scientific and other folks in, in our ecosystem to push hard to create the innovations that save lives and change patient lives. And to that end, on the next slide, I wanna share with you our Canadian mission. So it ties into that last story. And our Boston Scientific Canada mission is to save the lives and improve the lives of over 3,700 Canadian patients every single day. And I've created a backdrop for you. You'll see um, the thumbnail pictures representing Canadian patients. And there's 460 representations on the background of this slide. The 460 rep representations um, are reflective of the number of Canadian patients that my hardworking team and Boston Scientific Innovative Products impact every single hour of every single day, Monday through Friday. And during our time together, so which would be roughly five minutes, we will have served uh, the interest that impacted almost 38 Canadian patients. So we're real proud uh, out of that and we're certainly committed to doing this strong work to serve our mission and keep our commitment to Canadian patients. Next slide, please. So Boston Scientific was looking for a new head office and um, uh, in this search, we had a choice. Uh, we had a choice where to locate this head office. We have, had, we have offices in Montreal, Ottawa, and in Mississauga, um, but we were looking for something special. This is gonna be our new head office and hybrid collaboration center to support our mission and commitment to Canadian patients. So we're pretty pleased with the way that this journey went. And we chose one of the most progressive, fastest growing innovation districts in Canada. And we found uh, in our minds a great fit in the city of Brampton. And a couple comments as it relates to, to Brampton and the Brampton Innovation District. So we we're very impressed with Mayor Brown and the economic development team, and mostly uh, uh, impressed with the fact that they were committed to our journey. And they also shared our social values, which is really, really important to Boston Scientific and the Boston Scientific culture. And those values that I'm referring to, the social values, are values that we live every day. And these include diversity, equity, and inclusion, a big part of our culture at Boston. And we share that culture with Brampton, um, being strong stewards of the environment and working hard to be a positive contributor in our community, values that we share again with, with this Brampton Economic Development Group. And furthermore, uh, Brampton offered exceptional access to a diverse pool of top talent to draw from and to build the future of my team Again, a really important attribute of the Brampton uh, Innovation District. So I'm very excited for the future and I look forward to working with leaders like the ones you heard today and the Brampton Economic uh, Development Group to serve the duality of our social responsibility while drawing on 
economic growth and prosperity for our collective futures. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share my thoughts this morning with everyone and happy Tuesday to all. Well, thank you very much. And thank you to all of our speakers uh, this morning. Um, unfortunately, we are uh, over time. Um, we did have a few questions uh, in the Q&A and, and those have been answered virtually. If you do have any questions for any of our speakers, you can certainly contact us at the LSO office um, or I think the speakers showed some of their contact information. We'd be happy to follow up with you on those. Just a few quick announcements to wrap up. Um, our road trip is going to continue across the province um, uh, throughout this week. We're traveling next to London, Ontario, um, Simcoe County, Barrie and Aurelia, and Ottawa. Um, we will also continue our webinar series on the 28th. We have a lunch session uh, with employer insights about attracting and retaining talent. Um, we have a very special event on October 5th. We have representatives from Denmark talking about their development of a life sciences strategy. As well, we have uh, representatives from Ontario and Quebec talking about their respective strategies around life sciences and comparing notes and sharing best practices. This will be actually a kickoff event to our larger annual policy forum, uh, which has now been rebranded to the LSO Ideas to Action Life Sciences Forum, and that will take place on November 3rd. So please register for that. Our awards uh, nominations are open. Um, they, uh, they do close on October 3rd, so the clock is ticking there. Please submit your nominations now if you know of exceptional individuals or organizations. And again, we have a number of categories. You don't have to submit to all. You could just choose one if you just have one in mind. Uh, it's easy to do, and you can find all the information on our website. I'd also like to encourage you to visit our exhibitors on the Feedloop platform. Uh, if you request information from an exhibitor, you will be automatically entered into a draw for a $250 Visa gift card. If you request information from all four, you will get four entries. And finally, a thank you to all of our sponsors, our corporate sponsors, our platinum sponsors shown here, our gold sponsors, as well as our silver sponsors. We really could not do these sorts of events without the support of our corporate uh, supporters. Mm -hmm. And finally, a very special thank you to today's sponsor and the theme of uh, today's road, uh, road trip, uh, the city of Brampton. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone.